to our conversation with the Eagles now, with Eagles co-founder Glenn Fry and Don Felder, who joined the band in 1974. Well, Don, you should probably start and tell, tell them how, we, how you and I met and tell them in the Boston uh -huh. and the Bernie thing. Bernie and I, Bernie Ledden uh, and I were living in a little small town in Gainesville, Florida, and had a band together in uh, the late 60s, and Bernie received a call from a band called Hearts and Flowers and moved back to California and started playing on the West Coast scene again. And I moved to New York and worked around that area and to Boston. And the, right after the first Eagles album had come out, uh, they were on tour opening for the Yes Tour, which was a pretty peculiar combination as far as The that. Eagles were opening for yes. 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 For yes. yes and so, not, right after the first oh. Eagles album. And so when they came through town, I went out to see Bernie and went backstage at... Uh, uh, Boston Music Hall there to say hello and everybody was jamming backstage playing and I played a little bottleneck guitar and everybody had a real good time and liked it and so forth and Bernie kept trying to tell me that I should pack up and move out to LA you know and it would probably be a good chance to find some work and get involved and you know into that scene so finally I took his advice and followed my nose which at this point uh, has led me to where we are today but when I first got out there we were, I was hanging out with him and to come, dropping by a few rehearsals here and there to, to jam at a fat chance and mm -hmm. just hanging around, you know. And it was right after Desperado when I first moved out there, and they were going out on the road. And I started working with a fellow named David Blue for a while. And uh, then, in the course of, of going through the process of making their third album, On the Border, uh, they changed producers. They left Glenn Johns and hired Bill Simzik. They uh, changed management. They left Geffen and Roberts and took on Irving Azoff. And in the process of finishing that record, Glenn had written a song called Good Day in Hell, which was a real rock and roll... On the Border album. Yeah, a real rock and roll record, which there really wasn't anybody in the band at that, that, at that time could play rock and roll guitar. So after a phone call from them to come down and do a session, I went down and uh, played slide guitar on that record. And... Uh, seemed to have a real good time and everybody seemed to like it and the next day I got a phone call from Glenn saying join our band and I went, like oh, a okay. discussion uh, Glenn uh, with you and, and uh, uh, the rest of the guys about well maybe we want to well this, yeah uh, I mean basically what what the problem that we had uh, I mean it's, it wasn't a bad problem but the thing was is that Bernie was the country guitar player and he was always singing and involved in the country songs and I was not a country guitar player so every time he wanted to sing something country the, the burden was on me to play country guitar which I couldn't do to save my life and I was a rock and roll guitar player but I was singing rock and roll songs and I needed some, you know we mm -hmm. needed somebody to play lead on that and that was not Bernie's forte mm -hmm. funny thing as I think about it, Irving was managing Joe Walsh at the time and I mean Don knows this we, we had said well let's get Joe Walsh to play slide guitar on Good Day in Hell Ah. And Irving said, Irving said, Joe's not in town. He's not going to be in town. And then we said, well, listen, Don Felder, the guy that's playing with David Blue, let's get him. We heard him play slide in Boston, and he's a monster, mm -hmm. and let's get him. So we had Felder come down and do this session at the record plant, and we cut it live. He played the solo live and stuff, and it was pr at that point, I think it was probably... Probably the best rock and roll track we had cut up to mm -hmm. that time, the mm -hmm. one that got us off the most. Uh, we were really excited about it, and just the next day, you know, Henley and I just talked on the phone and said, hey, we got to get this guy in our band. This is where it's at. Let's get, you know, let's beef it up. Let's make it a five-piece band so we can play rhythm guitar and have double leads. And, uh, and it was a you big, know, important change for the band. To, uh, yeah, yeah, very, uh, very well, important. It really took uh, a lot of burden off of Glenn to, for me to help carry a lot of the bluegrass stuff. I played mm -hmm. mandolin on some stuff yeah. on Bernie's five-string banjo and another acoustic guitar and finally started playing pedal steel and assuming a lot of the roles to help that part of the band. And at the same time, it gave Glenn somebody mm -hmm. to uh, lean on as far as rock and roll. And just, well, did the track Already Gone, did that come about after you were already playing with him? No, that track had already been cut. It had already been cut, because that's a good I, rocker. Yeah, yeah, yeah but my, see, my solo on Already Gone, we didn't feel was enough to carry it. So after we cut Good Day in Hell and decided to get Felder in the band about three or four days after that session, then we said, hey, why don't you come and put something against this lead part that I did on Already Gone? So then Felder added his part. Uh -huh. And well, then, that was really uh, the first Eagles rock hit, rock, and, rock single hit, yeah. I would say. Yeah, I think so. I mean, Witchy Woman is a rock, was a rock and roll song, but no, it's more far, acoustic, as far, right? yeah, but yeah. more like a straight, I know what you're mm -hmm. talking about when you say right. more of a flat out kind of rock and mm -hmm. roll song. Still uh, a high point in the show. I mean, yeah, it's, it's a killer it's, line. It's a good rock and roll tune. But do it. I still think uh, the 
part of the reason that this ban has survived as long as it has is based on the type changes that we're just describing now. Me interjecting a new element of music and, and direction into the band, and then when Bernie left and Joe joined, he interjected a whole new element, and it just went through another you know, mold, another change, and then when Randy left and Timmy came into the band, it seems like over the course of changing uh, players in the organization, it's kept a new environment. Yeah, it's uh, music alive. You know, it's grown a whole lot. I completely agree, and and it's uh, you're lucky in a way, or maybe by design, maybe you're just smart also, because other bands have been ruined by the the same kind of ch uh, you know occasional changes in personnel. But you guys just seem to grow, and and the sound gets even stronger. Well, I think it's like we started out with the, with a pretty good football team, and we've just worked to get the personnel better and to and to make it. Uh, you know, to develop this, uh, you know, yeah. develop this team over the last seven, eight years to, you know, where we got now, we got the team that, that you know, we'd have liked to have started with. But Couple we got years. it now, and mm -hmm. uh, that's fun. A couple of years of first-round draft picks, and we strengthened A couple that, of good know. trades, you know, picked <laughs> up a couple right. free agents <laughs> there, right. and uh, that's right. right. We'll be back with more from Don Felder and Glenn Fry after this. We continue now our conversation with Eagles, Glenn Fry, and Don Felder. You know, people, uh, uh, fans always enjoy hearing about with other interviews. That I, I wonder if you can, we can get into this for a minute. Is just kind of a brief description of what an Eagles recording session is like. You know, it's like to give people a flavor. It's so, a uh, bummer. It's, well, the data <laughs> set. Let, let's try to we'll try to get some organization to it. I assume that. Uh, a date is set, a time is set, and a studio is set. Let's yeah. get past that point, okay? Mm -hmm. So let's say it's the first, uh, it's the first getting together. Let's, let's think back. Let's talk about the long run. And if you can think back to the first time you were all together in a studio ready to start putting down something mm -hmm. or another and yeah. give us an idea of uh, what that uh, afternoon or evening was like. Well, I guess we were real uptight. And trying to be relaxed and loose and keep everybody loose. But, I mean, the fact of the matter was going in the studio the first time after Hotel California uh, wasn't, uh, wasn't exactly what I would call a, you know, a day at the races or, you know, just, uh, you, you know had, what I mean? It was you no gave picnic. yourselves a tough act to follow. Oh, yeah, 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 we, we ran turned around. Gun. We yeah. were coming out of the chute trying to, mm -hmm. to, to stare down the barrel of what Hotel California had left for us to, to top, to beat, you know, and that's just... A lot of pressure was laid on everybody's shoulders as far as performance, as far as the sound of the record, as far as production, as far as material, as far as writing, as far as in, in every aspect. It was a real, a little bit of an uncomfortable situation to be in, even though everybody tried to relax and be cool. I mean, we, knew we, were, we know we're good, you know, we know we can play and stuff, but in the beginning we had... Uh, we had a little we had a little trouble getting it going, and I think it, it would be understandable. I mean, I think if you asked, uh, you know, if you asked Peter Frampton what it was like going in the studio after Frampton comes alive, he'd probably give you the same answer. I did ask his, him, he said he was petrified. In his, in his many words, yeah. yeah. You know, that, like Dylan says, they deceived me into thinking I had something to protect. Mm -hmm. I think that probably, uh, you know, that would be a good way to describe the first couple months in the studio when we were working on the long run. Mm -hmm. I mean, our sessions are, uh, you know, I mean, we, we start, like, let's say we start at 4 o'clock. That gives everybody enough time to get up in the morning, get a little exercise, get a meal. Right. We show up at the studio, uh, have a little coffee, and uh, talk about what we're going to do that day. Everybody brings songs in, I guess. Yeah, well, we do that before the studio. Yeah, yeah, See, this so is stuff that we do, like, out at Felder's mm -hmm. house, at, at Don's house. We'll go out there and rehearse in a small room, and, uh, like, Don makes tapes at his house uh, on his four track, uh, the track to Hotel California, you know, Don made with one of those rhythm drummers mm -hmm. and, and an acoustic guitar, and then he'll just, he just overdubbed everything, put the bass on, played a regular drum kit with the, you know, with the rhythm uh, machine, mm -hmm. and a bass and three or four guitars, and then he'll take these tapes and, and bring them to Henley and myself and say, hey, this can you, here's, here's four or five things I've been think? jacking yeah. around with. Can you make up, you know, do you think there's any uh, words or mm -hmm. things to do like that? Mm -hmm. So a lot of that, a lot of the material, you know, we know what we're going to do before we go in the studio. It's not like we, we went down and booked a bunch of studio time and then said, what are we going to record? Right. Oh, so you were, there was some preparation before that. Yeah, yeah. We, yeah. we had quite a few ideas that we originally started off with, which was, I guess, two years ago, yeah. a year and a half mm -hmm. ago. 
And at the time, we were at a point where we had to start working on something. Even some of the stuff was yeah. incomplete. A lot of stuff didn't even have lyrics to it yet. Mm -hmm. Some lyrics were there without tracks. And uh, so we just went in and started working on stuff. And I think maybe one or two out of the first tracks we cut wound yeah. up staying on the record mm -hmm. and everything else. To the wayside. If I could backtrack a second, because I think it's interesting about the, the pressure you guys are feeling coming off of Hotel California, and it occurred to me that it's like something's weird here whereby everybody's got to always top themselves or something, and the question really is, do you think that that pressure comes from the outside? I'd like, in other words, you do something as magnificent as Hotel California, and nobody will, would argue with the, um, well, the greatness of that, that album, and it always will be. Does the pressure come from, with, from outside, people saying, okay, Eagles, what, do you, what else can you show me? Mm -hmm. or, is, or does it come from within? From within, do you think you bring that pressure to bear yourselves to equal it or top it? Or? I think it's a little bit of both. You know, I think uh, performers are basically insecure people. And I think we, I think we fortify our, ourselves by having other people tell us we're okay. Mm -hmm. So, uh, <laughs> so you know, I mean, there is definitely pressure from the outside. And uh, I know myself as a record buying person and a, and, a, and a record buyer myself that once I get an idea that somebody's good, and if they give me one album that I think is a right turn away from where I think they should be going, I'm very fickle. Mm -hmm. And I say, oh, well, I don't like, God, I don't like that anymore. Mm -hmm. And uh, you don't buy any more of their records. And then they've got to redeem themselves all yeah, over again exactly. sometime right. in the if future. If they get the chance. So, you know, I mean, so there was that pressure of whatever we do, let's not make a mistake. Do you have uh, a favorite song on the album? Is mm -hmm. it something? That, no. <laughs> no, I don't really. Uh, you know, we yeah, try to one. like Henley, them all. Henley, yeah. I've asked the question of yeah. all of you. and uh, he, he, was sad, Kathy? Yes, it was. Yeah. Yeah. He said it right off. He said, loved the song. He said it was the last one done. It was just before the record was that finished. That song was, yeah, it was backed against the wall for quite a while. Just beat the pants off of it. <laughs> 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 it was really hard to put it away, too. You know? <laughs> Didn't want to go down. Who is, um, uh, the, on the uh, liner notes of the long run on the Sad Cafe, it says the song is respectfully dedicated to the memory of John Barrack. I'm not familiar, maybe I should be, but I'm not. Who's, who is John Barrack? Well, John Barrack uh, was our first road manager. And ironically, he was also the bird's first road manager. Hmm. He was a bartender at the Troubadour Bar who served me when I was 20. And didn't let and didn't make me pay for my drinks, mm -hmm. and he let me pick his brain and ask him questions about the birds and why didn't they get along and why did they break up and tell me about Hollywood a go go and Ciro's and the whiskey and uh, you know and he patiently asked, and all and answered that all the stuff. questions and uh, he was uh, he's the man who took us to the desert and showed us how to go to the desert without a Coleman stove and frozen chickens, you know, I mean, uh, he was very much like a, like a, a bard, a teacher, uh, mm -hmm. you know, he was 44 years old when he was our road manager, and he road managed us through the first year, and uh, he just, you know, gave us a lot of good advice, uh, God rest his soul, he was a hell of a man, and uh, he was a guy, I'll tell you one thing he told me, for example, I was real uptight about doing interviews, I didn't know what to say. And the guys that I was talking to, because I didn't have my choice of picking a Dave Herman. I mean, you get an interview, you just went to interview whoever you did, you know. And I came back from one interview, and I was all shook up because this guy was a creep. And he asked a bunch of dumb questions. And Barrick said to me, listen, Glenn, he says, you have to lick the stamp to send the letter, not for the taste of the glue. You know, and, and just things like that. I mean, so, I mean, we just dedicated it to him because he was such a great man and... Uh, we it, miss we miss him. him. He passed away recently. Yeah, he passed away about two years, two mm -hmm. three years ago. Um, one final question. This, uh, you know, maybe you can best answer, Glenn. But I've never heard an answer. How the band became called Eagles, and what the Indian imagery is all about. Well, we, you know, we were we, we get together. It's funny, like you know, there's only one name you can have for a group, but then you have about two hundred that you pick, pick around, them. right? And it just seemed. Uh, uh, J.D. Souther and I, who are both, we're both Scorpios, at one time uh, we were going to call one, one of uh, the, the second Long Branch Penny was allowed and was going to be called Double Eagle because the eagle was the symbol for the scorpion, the highest evolution. But, I mean, actually, there's so many reasons for picking the eagles. It looks good in print. It's simple, you know, and like we said, it could be a street gang or a, a fellowship. 
-hmm. You know, the eagle is the bird that flies closest to the sun. It's the, it's, uh, you know, it was the uh, the Indian mythology. Bernie told us it it carried your aspirations and your prayers to the gods. Is that where the the in the uh, kind of Indian feeling on a lot of the album covers and the mm -hmm. logo comes from? Yeah, that's right. It's also very American. Yes, eagles, yeah. and yes, you it certainly is. are in yes. America. And, every, and, and every country has an eagle. There's a German eagle, a Russian eagle, a Polish eagle, a Japanese eagle. Uh, seemed like a good, uh, universal, uh, simple thing. Well, I'd just like to say that uh, to people listening, and this is on all around the country, that when the eagles come to your town, get in line for a ticket because uh, the show is, uh, is great, as best as I've ever seen the band. Well, we, we've been feeling real good about this tour and stuff. Everybody's been playing good, and, you know, we, we're learning to take care of ourselves, so the shows are a little better, you know, because of that. Uh, I'm trying not to stay up too late, although last night uh, we fell from grace a little bit, but uh, <laughs> when Bob Seeger and your producer and a bunch of friends show up, it's, uh, it's a little hard to go to sleep right after the gig. Thanks a lot. Hey, Thank we, we enjoy talking to you. We'll be back. We return to our conversation with the Eagles now with the 